rejoice the way you rejoice. Secondly, as it is said in English, it is not over until it is really over. You know, many of us, many a time, have watched football, soccer. You remember the Olympics that the Nigerians um, finally won when they were playing one particular match, either the semi-final, you know, it was like they were gone. They were like three down or something like that, and everybody thought it was over. But they won it and became the gold medals because it is not over until it is over. Sometimes you can tell that it's extra time and there's just no way people begin to rush out of the stadium so they can get their cars and beat the traffic. And while they are doing that, they hear screams, deafening screams of goal. And they want to rush back into the stadium, which is not possible. And then the deafening sound overshadows the commentator on radio. They are, they are asking, Luhel, Luhel, what happened? Tell me. They have equalized. They have won. But you left thinking that it was over. And so Job's tragedy was enough for his wife, and that can be your business partner, your friend, your classmate, your roommate, your town's boy, um, the people who you're close to. Just look at this situation and say it's hopeless. It's over. Let's go home, close shop, pack up. Nothing good is ever going to happen. But as we end this series, we see that sometimes it all goes wrong, but it doesn't always all end wrong. With God, there is something called a turnaround. With God, my friends, there is something called a lifting up. With God, in the Bible, it says your latter can be greater than your former and your past. With God, in the Bible, it also says better is the end than the beginning. It's like a relay race, a 4 by 400 or a 4 by 100 You can see the person that start 100, the first 100, the second 100, and you think it's going to go well until they take that last curve and then sometimes the men are separated from the boys and you find that the person who was third in lane two first and second suddenly hits it all the way home and so as we end this series looking at the life of Job and patterning it to our own lives because sometimes you can be in a mountaintop experience and you think that nothing would ever go wrong. Sometimes you can be in a valley situation and feel nobody knows your situation. It can be worse than you are already experienced. The truth is that God brings us all out of it. So with Job, when we get to the end of the book of his of book of the book of Job, the 42nd chapter, we see very very beautiful things from God. But before we get into that, let me also say that there is a qualitative characteristic called endurance. And there is a verse in the Bible that talks about it. Jesus Christ spoke in Mark's gospel, the second of the Injil, the second Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the second of the New Testament books. Mark, Jesus Christ said, he or she, for that matter, that endures to the end. The person that goes all the way to the end is the one that will be saved. In sports, in tracks, in any event, even again, the Bible makes reference to it. This is how the Bible puts it. Nobody is crowned who is an athlete, who is a sportsman. Nobody is crowned except he runs according to the rules, except he finishes. One of the great servants of all time, served the Lord Jesus Christ, had a phenomenal life, started first totally against the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, ended totally in support of it, and wrote at least 13 books of the 27 New Testament books. His name is Paul, former Saul, lawyer, educated, zealous Jewish man. At the end of his life, he wrote a statement that goes like this. I have fought the good fight. I have run my race. And I have finished my cause. I have finished. He that endures to the end. I have finished. I have run and I have breasted the tape. I have finished my race. So it's not over because there's a downward dip. 
in your life, your school results, a bit of a challenge in your health, challenge in your relationship, your economics has gone out of control, you are not able to meet your deadlines, it looks like you have to repeat a paper, repeat an examination, move accommodation, or some of the things that happen in life, change jobs, or you know, take a lower grade, take a lower title, even sometimes when it looks like you have been disgraced, it is not over until he who gave you his breath on loan, on credit, God, says it's over. Because when he says it's over, nobody else can say anything. There's a finality with him. But when man says it's over and God says it's not over, then there's a resurrection for you and for me. And so... Job had to learn to endure. Agreed as a human being, touched with human frailties, he began to question God after some time, but I have been faithful, I have been upright, I have brought my children up well, I fear God, I run away from evil, I am upright, I am a giver, I am a philanthropist, my wealth is as a result of your goodness to me, and it is evenly distributed. I do fair trade policies. I treat my staff well. You know, I, I do open um, leadership structures, open government. I mean, so what is it that I have done? And he had a little bit of that shaking in his life for two reasons. One, because he had friends who came to him and really just told him that all his tragedy was because he did something wrong, which is not always so. And then he also, in his human weakness, almost got to that point when he said, look, I can't take it anymore. God, I wish you were like a man. And I love Job when he speaks like that. He said, I wish God was like a man so I could talk to him. We could argue together. But you see, he's God Almighty in heaven, and I am here suffering with all kinds of problems. He doesn't understand me. If he understood me, we could talk face to face. I wish there was an umpire. I wish there was a referee. In the older translations of the Bible, it says, I wish there was a day's man, a referee, an umpire. Ladies and gentlemen, what does a referee, umpire, or a day's man do? We all know. They are the ones that judge the game. It's a line ball, it's out, it's a free kick, it's in, indirect, it's penalty. They call for the timeout. They blow the whistle, they give the yellow cards, the red cards, they stop, they start. You can be a football match, especially in soccer, or really any game, but you know, we are all passionate about soccer, could be going so well. And if thunder and lightning begins to hit five minutes to the end of the game, or even when there's a penalty shootout, with all the adrenaline on everybody, the referee has a little whistle and he can make a decision that for the safety of everybody, because of thunder, lightning, and water on people, he can blow that whistle and stop that match for two hours for 40 minutes, for the next day. That's a referee. His word is final. So Job was saying in his moment of perplexity, I wish there was a referee. And sometimes we feel like that. I have felt like that. I'm sure you have felt like that. That sometimes you wish there was a referee because with a referee you expect impartiality. You expect justice. You expect, you know, he's not swayed by your face. He makes the call and the call is right, even if it's at the last minute. And God sent us a referee. His name is Jesus Christ. Fully God, fully man. Understanding man as a human, but God wrapped up in mankind. And that's why he was called the Messiah, the Savior. And so when Job made that request, it was the request of the human heart for a referee to say, can you feel as I am feeling the pain that I am going through, the frustration, my emotions, my weaknesses, the anger? And because he qualified to die in our stead, then he understands us. Actually, the scripture says that he's touched the very feelings of our weakness and our infirmities. He knows when his great friend Lazarus died, he went and he he was overcome with emotion. He wept. When he was hungry, he asked for food. Those are emotional feelings. Now, when Job questioned God, 
God said, all right, I will 